What is up amigos? Today we're talking about the effects of a crosswind on a car's aerodynamics. So for a regular car, we do a lot of testing with a wind that's going straight on, so there's no crosswind. And that's great, we know about the general drag coefficients and the lift coefficients, and that's all well and good, except when is there really not a crosswind? Pretty much all the time there is some sort of crosswind. So what happens when there's actually now a component in the side direction? So the results are actually quite intuitive. So in terms of the drag coefficient, it depends somewhat on the car, whether it is a fastback or a squareback. So for example, a fastback usually might have a drag coefficient of around 0.25 when the flow is coming straight on. But when the flow is now coming at an angle, that now bumps up to about a 0.3-ish, maybe 0.33. For a squareback, the drag coefficient is usually around about 0.3 with a head-on wind, and now with a crosswind of, let's say, 10 degrees or so, then you get about 0.35 to 0.36. So that's an interesting result in that, to begin with, a faster back has a lower drag coefficient by a long way, but with this crosswind, it really nullifies a lot of that gain. And that's quite intuitive because when you think about it, a car is optimized to have a flow in one direction. As soon as you have it in a different direction, all these different things that you have, for example, the diffuser, the um, rear, of how it slants down, the wheels, how they're angled, the wheels, spoilers, everything around a car, it's not going to operate nearly as well as if the flow is coming in because it's not optimized for that. So now we get far greater wakes happening around the rest of the car, including on this side. Let's say the wind is coming this side. The flow has attached quite nicely along this roof and hits this side but then we get a massive separation zone around this region and that also helps skew the wake and also increase the drag that way. In terms of the lift, now for both cars, both other cars, fast backs and square backs, it pretty much nullifies any downforce that you're going to be getting. So if a car is producing, has a downforce of maybe 0 0.1, that's going to nullify to make it go closer to about zero. So it really wipes out all this lift that you're producing, all this downforce that you're producing. And that's again, because the car is optimized for one direction and let's say you have a spoiler at the back well now you have a flow coming over the side here and that might result in some separated flow hitting the spoiler and then nullifying what it can do and also there is again the side force and the side force is usually very high so you might get a side force coefficient of about 0.4 for example so it's, there's a lot of force pushing the car to the side in terms of the pressure around the car if we look from straight on let's just do a simple box and the wind is the direction of the side of the um, cross flow is this way, so into the page and this way, we get very high pressure on this corner here. And that's because as the flow comes along, it is it's crashing into this region and we get high pressure around this face. On the top, there's fairly high pressure, but then we get another peak around here before we get very low regions around here, which then creates that side force. So that is how a crosswind affects a car's aerodynamics and really makes it a lot worse. It nullifies a lot of the downforce, it increases the drag dramatically and really wipes out a lot of that benefit you get from having a fast back compared to a square back. So if you like this video, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And I just want to peace amigos.